Hello, I'm Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. I'm going to demonstrate how to make a sewing machine cover. Now this is a follow-up video to my sewing machine organizer video. So watch that video if you want to make the organizer also. So let's take a look at the cover, okay? All right, here it is. Now, if you will notice, there are three applique, machine applique, spools of thread along the top portion. Then I have these large, colorful, decorative buttons up there also. On the bottom, I've used a sewing-themed fabric. It's got pin cushions, scissors, thread spools, all kinds of stuff all over it regarding sewing. And then the yellow here that I have up on the upper part is also all over the back. So this color is on the back. Then the side top piece here is uh, measuring tape, which was also used on the organizer here. Okay, so this is the organizer. All right, let's go over uh, how to measure your machine because this may not fit your machine. So you're gonna need to measure your machine and make adjustments accordingly. Okay, when measuring, you wanna measure from the very bottom of the machine to the very top of the machine. That includes any dials or spool holders, whatever is up here. Whatever is the highest point, that's your height. Then you wanna add one inch for some seam allowance and a little extra wiggle room, okay? Then, to measure the width, measure from the farthest point out on each end. For instance, the farthest point on this side is this bottom piece. But on this side, it's the spool, this here, the dial that you turn for your needle, okay? Then you need to measure the depth from front to back. Make sure you measure both ends because I bet they're not equal. So whichever one is the widest, that is the measurement you would use. And then add an inch. So to each measurement, top to bottom, side to side, and front to back, add one inch, one inch for each one. Okay? All right. Let's go over to how to put this all together. Here is the drawing for the template to make for your spool. Uh, then also down here it tells you the measurements of fabric to cut to make each spool. So if you have a cell phone, put the video on pause, take a snapshot of this sheet so you know what to make. Or you can just write this all out yourself. And then here are the cutting instructions. Okay, this is page two. Now your finished size for this machine is 18 by 19. Trust me, measure your machine because this cover I made did not fit my machine. My machine was much shorter and much wider and very odd from back to front. So measure your machine. Now you're gonna need to cut for the both the top and the front, uh, top front piece and, piece and top front bottom piece, there's two pieces for the front, 19 by 8 and a quarter. Then the back is 19 by 16. The side top is 50 by 7 and a half. Now if you don't have fabric that's 50 inches long, then cut two pieces 25 and a half inches, stitch them together and that'll give you a piece long enough. Then for your um, lining, for the front and the back, they're cut the same size, so cut two, 19 by 16. Then the lining for the top side piece, 50 by seven and a half. Cotton batting for the front back is uh, 19 by 16. Cotton batting for the side top, 50 by seven and a half. And your binding strips, make sure they're two and three quarter inches wide. You're gonna need two. If you don't know how to cut your bind binding strips, watch my video, Straight Grain Binding. And then two more things, four large buttons, and then two-sided fusible webbing to put on the spools of thread. Okay, now let's start putting it together. Let's first put the spools of thread together. Okay. 
here's my fusible webbing. Now I'm not going to go into a lot of detail with your fusible webbing. Uh, watch my video Machine Applique Lesson 1 for details, detailed instructions on how to use fusible webbing. So take your template that you made and make sure you've drawn a line across here and you're going to draw that same line on your fusible webbing. This is important that you put that line on there, okay? So trace three of these on the grid line side of the fusible webbing. Then when you cut it out of your fusible webbing sheet, leave about a fourth of an inch around your lines, okay? Then take the fabric pieces now, the two end pieces are the uh, fabrics that represent the top and bottom of the spool. I used a kind of a dark beige or pale brown so that it would give the impression that it's wood. Okay, now this fabric in the center is the thread fabric. It's three and a quarter inches this way and three inches this way. Put the two end pieces on this, these two ends here, the ones that's going three and a quarter inches. So put that on, okay? Then pin and stitch one eighth of an inch, a very narrow eighth of an inch. Then press it on the right side, excuse me, wrong side. Then open it up and press on the right side. Now make sure both seams are going towards the center of the spool. That's real important. Don't get this step confused. Okay, then on the wrong side here, take your fusible webbing piece, remove the paper backing. So now you have that tick, stick, uh, sticky side there. Place that sticky side down on the back of your fabric. Lining up this line with the stitch line. Place, up, place it on both ends on the stitch line. Now if it doesn't line up absolutely perfect, don't worry because when you do your applique stitches, it's going to cover up any imperfections you may have. Okay, so finger press it down, then cut out along your trace lines with some scissors. So cut out all three spools. Now, take the fabric that was for the top front, the piece that's gonna go on the top front. Take a ruler and place the two inch line along the lower edge. Okay, line it up. Also, place a pin up at the top that indicates the center. My center is nine and a half. Remove the paper backing, center it, and line it up along the lower, along this edge of the ruler. Once you have it lined up, then finger press it down. Take your next spool, remove the paper backing, and line it up about one and a half inches over from the center spool. And do the same thing with the last spool. Remove the paper backing, line it up about an inch and a half, finger press everything down. Now, it's not permanently fused on yet. Take a damp cloth, place it over the spools, and set your iron to cotton with steam. Place the iron over it. Now, always follow the instructions on your package because your fusible webbing may be different than mine. Then uh, give it a burst of steam, hold it for 15 seconds. Do each spool, okay, going across, holding it for 15 seconds. And by the way, do this at your ironing board, not on your cutting table or cutting board. Not a good idea. Okay, once you have it fused on, now it's permanently fused on, you can't take it off. Now do your applique stitches. Put your stabilizer behind, whether it's paper or tearaway stabilizer, whichever one you prefer to use. Then do your applique stitches. 
around all three spools. If you don't have any applique stitches, use a small zigzag stitch. Okay, now take your fabric for the bottom of the front, line it up on that edge there, pin and stitch one quarter inch all the way across, then press it with your iron, open it up, and press it again on the right side with your iron. Okay, good. Now, all three sections are going to be layered the same. So, whether it's the back, the side, or the front, they're all layered the same. So lay your lining down first, then your cotton batting, and then whatever fabrics you're using for the outside, place that on top, okay? All three are layered the same. Now you're going to do decorative stitching. Your stitching lines are going to be two inches apart, okay? So, start in the center, and you can either use a straight stitch or a decorative stitch like I have here. Start at the edge, stitch towards that spool. When you get to the spool, do a few stitches back and forth, then lift up and go to the other side of the spool and continue on down to the lower edge. Then come up again over here, go two inches over and stitch again. Keep going over two inches apart, stitching your lines. Then go over to the other side and do the same thing. Then turn it and start on either side of your seam. My seam is underneath this ribbon. And do the same thing. Two inches apart, go to the other side two inches apart. Then take your ribbon and place it over the center seam here. Place it there. Then stitch along the upper edge all the way across and then the lower edge all the way across. Good. Now we've got one more step to do on this front piece. Now you're going to round your edges. Okay? So take something round from your kitchen, a small lid to a jar, and you can either trace around it with a pencil or fabric marker, or if you're brave like me, go around it with your rotary cutter. You're going to do this on both the two upper corners only, and this is what it should look like. Make sure it's a small curve. Don't make it too big. Do this also on your back piece on the two upper corners. Okay? Alright, let's move on. Now take your back piece and your side top piece. And you're going to mark the center of each piece. So you're going to fold it in half and put a pin on each side like I've done here. Okay? And then do the same thing for the back. Fold it on each side and you only need to put one pin up at the top. Just one at the top. Okay? Then begin pinning the two pieces together. Matching these two pins. Pin it all the way around three sides and you're going to need more pins along the curve to hold it nice and flat. Then you're going to stitch one fourth inch seam from this raw edge along all three sides. Then after that take your front piece and stitch it onto the other side of this piece, the side top portion, doing the same way. Nothing changes. It's done the same way. All right, now let's go to the bottom. Take your two binding strips, okay, and bring the two ends together. Uh, pin and stitch one quarter inch, then press the seam open. Fold it in half and press the full length of your strips, okay? All right. Then begin pinning it down and start uh, somewhere in the center on the back and begin pinning it down all the way around the two, the, 
all four sides, okay? When you get to where the two ends meet, you're going to overlap by a half an inch and then you're going to cut the excess off. Then you're going to bring the two ends together and open it up and you're going to bring the right sides together like this. Okay. Then pin and stitch a quarter of an inch here. Then finger press that seam open and then fold it back and finish pinning it down. Then stitch 3 8 of an inch seam allowance all the way around the lower edge, stitching the binding on. Then flip it over to the inside and you're going to take the folded edge of the binding and bring it past the stitch line and pin it down all the way around the lower edge of the cover. Then flip it back to the outside and you're going to do stitch in the ditch and that's where two pieces of fabric come together. This is the ditch. You're going to stitch right in that ditch. Don't stitch on the binding and on the fabric right here. Okay? Stitch all the way around and then you're done. So let's take one more look at the cover. Okay? I think that you're going to really enjoy having this cover. By the way, this also makes a nice gift. So if you have a group of ladies that get together, or gentlemen, then make one of these as a gift. I think they'd really enjoy it. Okay, now I hope all this was helpful to you. My next video will be how to make Easter holiday table linens. And these are so easy and so quick, you can make them all in a day. So, to keep informed on all my future videos, click on one of my subscribe buttons. Down there in that lower right hand corner, there's a red button down there. It says subscribe and then in the upper left corner, you might be seeing towards the end of the video my face in a little circle. That's a subscribe button also. So click on one of those. YouTube will send you, uh, actually YouTube will ask you for your email address. And the next time I have a new video, they send you an email with a big button in the center. You click on it and it takes you directly to my latest video. I'm Cheryl. I'm so glad you came to my sewing room. See you next time and happy sewing.